seven one on one pass rush. We did spring league two minutes, so all those guys got all that work. But then we held out um, Ty and Nash, who we've been holding out of all the live stuff. Tommy and Giff, Keith. Um, uh, on offense, I held out uh, uh, Ben Hart, Ben Scott, and um, Jamal Banks. Fedoni got a little work. So the guys who have a ton of reps or something like that, you know, to me, once you get hit a thousand reps, it's kind of like, you know, let the young guys play. So, but for the, for the most part, we had, you know, everyone else I thought really competed. We came out of it pretty healthy, which was great. And, uh, you know, for us, it's like a, it's like a blood test. You know, you, you send your blood off, they tell you how you're doing. And for, for us as coaches to see what we're doing well, for the players to see what they did well, a lot of good things came out of the scrimmage, but uh, yeah, we did hold a couple guys. Do you think you'll have a similar plan for uh, this well, this Saturday scrimmage and, and also next week as far as holding the the veteran guys out or what, what's your what's your thought there? Yeah, I'm not going to scrimmage th those five or six guys, you know, seven guys um, um, at any point. It's kind of how I've always done it in my career. I kind of learned it from Coach Paterno. Once you were like a fifth year senior, we just kind of if you had been a st multi year starter, you didn't you didn't you know you didn't do a ton. We do more here team wise, but I, I you know I can't say specifically in the spring game because we might change that, but. As it relates to this Saturday, I would, I would assume we'd hold some of those guys. How do you see those QBs handle that that Saturday scrimmage? Uh, you know, I thought they, you know, I thought they were really good. Um, you know, it's a really hard defense to go against, and I thought we protected the ball well, which is the first thing, right? Like we're on a mission to be in the positive territory on turnover margins. So I think there was only one turnover on the day um, through through you know you know a lot of reps. Um, I thought they handled all the pressures. I thought they adjusted all the different things. But the biggest thing is, you know, get into the stadium for the first time and uh, have, you know, I put crowd noise on so you can't have coaches out there like, no, cut your split. Coaches are the worst. So they want to tell guys what to do. So I put crowd noise on so you couldn't hear from the sideline. And, you know, it's just wanted to test the guys and see what they knew. And um, a lot of things to work on, you know, but a lot of positive things. So um, I think we've made a lot of strides in a short amount of time. How do you kind of, how do you kind of balance that in the spring where obviously you're Emphasizing protecting the ball, but you know, defensively, you also are trying to get turnovers and get the ball out too. I mean, how, how's that kind of push and pull work? Yeah, well, well, I mean, we just push it on both sides, and then the result is I don't get caught up in the result. You know, to me, it's like I was laughing. What was great about the scrimmage for me on Saturday is normally you stand back there by yourself. I was back there. I had I made Nash. Nash had a clipboard out there. He was you know he was charting things for Terrence. I don't know what he was charting. I had Ty out there. I had Giff, and I was telling Giff like. The hard thing as the head coach is when you create a turnover, you're fired up for the defense, you're angry at the offense, and vice versa. So very, rarely are you really happy in a scrimmage. You give up a big play, great job offense. What are we doing on defense? So you know, really, it's just more about the it's more about the process of it. Like, um, you know, are we on defense? Are we attacking the ball? Are we punching at the ball? Are we? You know, the quarterbacks weren't live, so that most of your turnovers come from the quarterback position. And then offensively, are we protecting the ball? And um, you know, the quarterbacks might not turn the ball over because they're not getting hit, but if they have one hand on the ball in the pocket, it's, it's eventually going to be a problem. So I, you know, I just try to stay very process-oriented and look at the tape. Um, but, yeah, we're trying to push it on both ends because, you know, we had 31 turnovers last year. That's obviously way, way, way too many. We also took, we only, only took the ball away 14 times, including on special teams once. So you know, taking the ball away 13 times is not nearly enough. You know, you look at most – most championship caliber teams, you know, like they're they're in the twenties. So um, we're pushing it on both ends. Are you seeing a correlation between the guys who were the top performers during the winter in the mat drills and the guys who are having really good springs right now? Um, I, I think they're independent. You know, I mean, I think um, I don't think we, you know I don't think anyone had a bad winter. So you know, I, I'm pretty pleased with everyone. Um, you know, you, you try to have a great winner just to give you a chance in the spring. And then in the spring, you know, you compete, you, you, you look at, you try to have a great spring just to give you a chance heading into the summer. Then you try to have a great summer <laughs> just to give you a chance heading into fall camp. But at the end of the day, the best players will play, right? Now, we can't have anybody out there that won't do the standard, right? Won't do the things that we ask of them. But this team's great about that. They do everything we ask. I mean, I was really pleased with today. I know you guys want to talk about the scrimmage, but the Tuesday after the first scrimmage, the, half the team has – Influenza. I mean, we were growing up, they called it the flu. Now it's influenza. It sounds way scarier. But, you know, half the teams, I mean, guys are sick. Guys are out there battling through it. And I came out there today like, you know, okay, I told the coaches, like, hey, let's get after them today. Let's coach hard today. Let's push them today. I, I was really happy. Like, they, I mean, you don't see me happy very often after practice, right? It's not my job to be happy. But I was really happy today with, like, them bouncing back and seeing a lot of the guys, 
you know, you come out of that first scrimmage, you look at what you did. You know, our pl- young, young people have a tendency to be like, oh, I played good, I played bad. You played how you played. Some things were good, some things were bad. Just build off the good stuff, fix the bad stuff, and I saw a lot of growth today. So um, I'm pretty pleased right now, to be honest with you. Coach, uh, the transfer portal opened yesterday across college football. I mean, with the two weeks of practice kind of going on right in the middle of all that, how do you manage that and what are maybe any challenges that might present with that 15-day window kind of right in your final two weeks of spring? Yeah, I mean, I think if anybody on our team wants to go in the portal, it's open today. Um, that's their right. You know, obviously no one has yet. Um, I don't anticipate anybody going in. When we get done with spring, we'll have a couple guys. will have a couple days to see if something's best for them. Um, you know, our, our guys are really transparent. We, we've had players on our team already have people from other teams contact them. You know, come in, walk in, say, "Coach, look at this. Show us the text message. Show us this." It's just it's a sad, it's a sad state of college football. When, you know, but the problem's not, the problem's not the players. Let me, let me start there. The problem's not the players. So, um, I love our guys. I want everyone to be here. But I also want them, you know, I mean, you know, we had guys transferred to other places last year. I've talked to their coaches. I've talked to them, how they doing. And, um, and once you played for me, you played for me for life. So, um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's a unique challenge in terms of um, some guys. Like, should I you – know, but we're pretty transparent with our guys. Like, if they want to come talk to us, we're here to talk to them. We, I ask the coaches after scrimmages to meet with guys one-on-one. I'm, I'm always available. So, um, I just don't think it's really – prudent and maybe this is maybe this is Pollyannish but like I don't think it's prudent for me to like coach guys thinking about the portal you know because like you you know the worst thing you can ever do for a young person is not have high standards for them and not push them to greatness so if you're afraid of pushing them because they might go to the portal then probably don't have the right guy anyway um so you know I'm sure things will happen good bad but um we're just going to coach the guys try to get the team better and pour, pour everything we have into our players, both on the field, off the field, and personally. And, um, you know, if something, something happens, it happens. Ask about them because a couple of veterans have just <coughs> uh, Vincent Shavers is a guy who they've liked how he's gotten after it. What, what, what's kind of jumped out about him as one of those? Really long... You know, I hate talking about freshmen. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I certainly would never use a freshman's nickname, but they call him V9. And, like, he plays football the way you want it played, you know. So I say all that to say, like, I normally wouldn't want to say it, but he, he earned he's earned the right to have someone talk about him. He flies around. Uh, I don't know if he's perfect yet, you know. I mean, he's got a lot of probably work to do football-wise, but he loves to play the game. He's unbelievably grateful. There's no entitlement to him. He works hard. Everything from academics to community service to football, he puts his heart and soul into. He's a blessing to be around the building and it's the type of kid you want to coach. Receiver wise, Matt, how have you seen you, that group improve over the course of the spring season? Yeah, you know, uh, good and bad. Um, we are uh, significantly improved in that room. The guys have grown up. We brought some players in. Uh, the freshmen are really good, so we're making some big plays. Um, I don't know if our ball skills in the scrimmage were what I wanted. We had too many drops, in my opinion, or tough catches, tough catch plays. Our team's not. We're not a big press team, and so if you guys go back to me talking about early on about us having the ability to handle guys getting physical with us. We don't play a lot of that, so we don't see a lot of it. So I've had to manufacture some of that. I don't know how we're handling that. In fact, I'll say this. When I have seen us get pressed, I don't think we've improved enough at it. Um, but the great thing about Garrett is he's he's one of those coaches. For a young coach, he, he's not real defensive. He's like, okay, we need to improve this, 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 and this. But, like, our route running, our speed, our effort, our knowledge is like, been really a great jump. There's just things to improve, ball skills, catching the ball with pressure on, you know, hard catches. And the biggest thing for me is just still, you know, we're going to go face some teams this year and they're going to line up and they're going to grab you at the line of scrimmage. And you, you, know, you might get one call or two, but you're not going to get 50. So you better learn, you know, you better learn to fight for yourself. And so, um, you know, again, everyone sees the wow plays. You know, we put out the highlights every day. Everyone sees the catch over the top, the one-handed, the shoulder catch, you know, but – there might be three other plays where we couldn't get off press. And so it's our job just to keep working on the things we're not great at. And I think that's the main thing moving forward is, you know, just continuing to improve our ball skills and um, handling press and handling people that are aggressive with us. You, you expect that Banks and, and Nair will lead the, the group in that area and showing the younger guys. I mean, I'll put Alex Bullock in that category too, leading them um, to, to teach the, the younger players, first and second year guys, how to handle press and, and you know, Work on their ball skills. Um, I think I think older players, especially new older players, I think the only thing they can really they they really mentor in is just in terms of like handling the pressure, 
handling the workload, and then the off the field stuff. I think in terms of beating press and all that, I think it's got to be Garrett. You know, now Alex because he's been here. Um, and then once you've kind of taught it, then then your older players start. You know, but they're so new to the program, just you know, learning how we do things, learning how we teach things. And again, because we're not seeing a ton of it, I've had to man- I man- manufactured some of it today. But um, as I've said before, Jamal's been great to have in the room. A guy who's had that much production. I think the biggest lesson that Jamal shows the guys is I've had a ton of production, yet I come into work every day and, you know, grind. He, he works his tail off. And so I think that's a really important lesson that as you have success, you know, you don't arrive. <laughs> as you have success, you continue to work to have more success. And that's what I see from Jamal. Physicality. How do you balance that in spring between, yeah, we want to be physical and we want to get ready for Big Ten football, but also we don't want to bang anyone up and we don't want to compromise, you know, yeah, I don't healthy. think about it. We, I mean, we, 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 we practice, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to have a tag off scrimmage, you know, we're not going to, you know, I mean, we, we, there's a lot of days where we thud, we don't tackle to the ground. Like our, our tackling to the ground reps are at a minimum, but we're five and seven. We're five and seven until we change that. And so, um, we, we have an amazing fan base and a lot of positive stuff around us all the time that excited for the new year. We're five and seven till we're not. And so, and if we were 11 and one, I'd be like, Hey, we lost the game. And if we were 12 and oh, I'd say, yeah, but that doesn't, I mean, we're going to always practice physical. How do you master your craft in this game if you don't do it? And so, you know, yeah, there's a lot of people win a lot of different ways. I'm not in any way talking about anyone else. I'm just talking about for us. I want to take great young people I want to watch them get a degree, maybe two degrees, have a great experience here. But I also want to develop pro players. And to me, lifting is great and running is great and teaching them the game is great. They've got to practice and play. So we are really physical. You know, we put the Guardian caps on this year, which I'm excited about. But we're going to get guys banged up. Guys are going to get hurt. What I do believe, and I believe this with all my heart, is if guys learn to play full speed, the injuries get reduced. And so we try to do everything we can. We put grass in. Everything we can to to minimize the injuries, but I mean we have we have some soft tissue stuff. We have some guys that got hurt from the season, but we've had nothing happen this year other than Leslie, and he he'll be back. That would affect the fall. So um, our job is to make sure we have a good team. You know, we 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 we're five and seven. We got to practice. <coughs> Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks coach. <laughs> They're saving up for Garrett. Give them the business. Good. We'll have, while Coach McGuire's in here, Jalen will probably be out there. We'll bring a couple receivers in here, but if anything you need to get Jalen, he'll be out there. So, questions for Coach? Shoot, I'd rather you listen to Jalen. <laughs> uh, real quick, um, thoughts and prayers are with Mr. Sharp, obviously, after last night, thinking about him. But go ahead, shoot him. Hey, Garrett, uh, you brought in two big name transfers. I mean, how big of a priority was that to kind of get some veterans like that? And, and have they been what you, you would have hoped through this point of spring? Yes, sir. I, I think the big thing about both those guys is they've made plays in college football. Um, and then also they're the right people um, when it comes to leadership, uh, football guys, right? Both of those guys know all three spots. They know what the Y is going to do. They know where the quarterback's eyes are. So, you know, just showing um, kind of how they prepare to those young guys and, and mentoring them uh, has been a huge thing for our room. Uh, two of the taller guys in your room. I mean, 
what do you think of maybe the, the size that they're going to be able to bring the, to the position? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, I think because, you know, this conference is obviously a big conference. You play in a lot of cold weather games. So um, a lot of times you're going to want a big possession type of guy or, you know, just a big body receiver in the red zone in tight spaces. Um, you know, I think that's always friendly for a quarterback. Jalen, uh, well, what have you seen out of him um, this spring coming off of last year? And, and what's like the biggest area he's trying to gain in? Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, what I've seen most about him is just the confidence of him as a football player. You know, you see him uh, making some ac – ap uh, I don't even know how to say it – making big catches right down the sideline and stuff like that. Um, his big area improvement right now and, and kind of the whole group, uh, which we're continuing to make strides in, is uh, winning at the line of scrimmage and winning at the top of the route, you know, to create some spe separation. Do those guys, uh, Jamal and Isaiah, do they bring similar skill sets um, – or, or how do they complement each other with the different things that they do? Um, yeah, I think they're different and um, also kind of the same. You know, uh, uh, Nair's probably a, a little bit faster, um, kind of your long speed type of guy that might be able to take the top off a little bit more. Um, you know, Jamal's a, a big body receiver that when you press him, he actually probably gets a little bit better, you know, just because he can be a little bit more physical with you um, at the line of scrimmage and within the route. So I think that's kind of where those two uh, differentiate a little bit. Rule said that he, um, you know, noticed that the receivers were maybe struggling a little bit with beating press coverage. What's the trick to beating press coverage, or what do you what do you tell the guys in that area? Yeah, you know, we're gonna uh, try to play on an edge. Um, you know, an edge is a side of a body uh, attack half a man kind of mentality. Um, you know, if you go right down to someone's face, then uh, you're doing what a DB wants to. Um, you know, we don't get a, a ton of press with our defense. You know, they're more uh, catch coverage. But that still can allow us to be physical, you know, at the top of the route. Um, you know, when we're getting rerouted in the slot, actually last week we got more reroutes um, than we have in the past. So that was huge, huge for us, you know, and we're working it in Indy every day. And your initial impression of some of those uh, mid-year enrollees, Ja'Cory, Davon, and what, as a coach, what are you trying to, you know, implement on them right away, those first practices you have with them? Mm, yes, yeah, so really just their process. Right. I think that's where they can gain a step, you know, the process of uh, studying your playbook, uh, eating right, post-practice, pre-practice lifts, recovery, all of that. Um, you know, obviously impressed with all three of the guys, Keelan, um, Davon, and Ja'Cory. Um, I think they're competitors. I think they fit our room. I think they fit with what we want to do uh, moving forward. And I think they're all three different, which is really, really exciting. How do you feel about the, the type of catchable ball and, and just the progress that the two early enrollee young quarterbacks have made in making life easy for your wide receivers? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think all three, you know, really all five are um, developing, right? I mean, any anytime you're out on the grass, you know, with, with the coaching staff we have, um, you know, I sat in the room with Coach Thomas, so I know how he coaches. I've heard him uh, over and over again. Um, so I think all five of those guys are taking strides, um, and then I think it's just a great opportunity for us. You got a variety of dudes in, in your room in terms of age. You got a lot of young guys, you guys, some in the middle, veterans, mm -hmm. but also in terms of, you know, composition, right? You got super, super fast guys. You got guys who are more physical. How is it for you or, or what are the advantages uh, as a room to have like a mixed bag like that? Yeah, you know, and they're all from different areas, right? So I think it's cool. You got all different personalities. Um, you know, they're, they are, they really, really care about each other, love each other a lot, so they want to see each other have success. Um, I think it allows us to be creative in how we utilize them. Um, you know, we've never been the type of team that just wants to play three guys. You know, we want to rotate. We want to play with fresh legs. We want to use them to their best of ability. Um, so I think it allows us to be creative in the passing game, um, you know, and then in other areas, whether it's situational football or out on the perimeter. Is there an optimum, like an optimum number of guys you want to have in rotation, red game ready? Uh, you know, I think that really depends on you know what other personnel you're in. You know, are we a, a, a 10, 11, 12, two back team, or do we play with a fullback? I think that really goes into it more of me just saying a, a blank statement number, honestly. Here with the transfer portal open this week, do you say anything to the guys just about how, how they evaluate, handle things? Things like that? Um, no, I, I don't think I'm going to address it. You know, I'm going to uh, coach the same way that I was coached by Coach Rule. I'm going to coach the same way that I was raised to coach. Um, you know, and I, I think, you know, right now in, in this era of college football, relationships mean more than they ever have. Um, and do you trust your coaches? 
um, to stay with you? Are they telling you the truth? Are they telling you the right things? So, no, I, n I'm not bringing it up. Uh, it's not going to waver any way that I, that I coach or that we coach. Um, you know, in fact, I think it just uh, makes our style of coaching, you know, about players and, and making it about the players, um, you know, even more needed, right? Alex, uh, Alex Bullock, he's one of the veterans of your room now. I mean, what do you think of the growth he showed over the last year and how important is he to your, to your room overall? Right. You know, I, I think just um, the, the work ethic he did, obviously, from going from a walk-on um, to a 12-game starter for us, uh, making plays, making plays down the stretch when we needed it. Um, you know, there's a, a few plays that I think of, whether it's Iowa or uh, Northern Illinois, where he gets us out of a jam. Um, you know, just excited about Alex and, uh, again, a guy that can play all three spots um, and just kind of one of those OOU, RDV guys that, you know, we want in our program. You're an after coaching here for a year um, in this role. What have you learned about yourself? Or Are you the same coach now uh, that you were a year ago? And maybe how have you tweaked or improved your coaching style? Uh, yes, sir. So definitely not the same person. Uh, obviously, you know, my, the players have brought the best out of me. Uh, totally changed my life in the best way. Um, listen first, speak less. I, I think, um, you know, in, in all areas, whether it's on the practice field, in the, uh, in the classroom, in a staff meeting, because um, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so I think that's helped me, helped me grow. Um, and then just those, those guys, right? You know, I want what's best for them. So, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to grind. That's, that's our staff. We're going to grind for our guys. You know, obviously we talk a lot about the catches and, and the great plays and everything like that, but, but how's the blocking been? How have you seen, you know, your guys improve from the beginning of screen, spring to now in terms of just run blocking? You know, it, it's improved, and every day uh, we're taking a step. You know, I think um, I'd, I'd really like to see Malachi Coleman out there um, because I think he brings us an edge, you know, and it's always good to see some guys that can kind of start that edge. Um, you know, Coach Rule and, and our staff, we're going to be talking about uncommon effort a lot. Um, so, you know, we're going to try to put that on tape every day. Um, you know, it, it's obviously improved from day one to now, what is this, day 10, you know, so I'm excited about the strides we've made. Did Malachi arrive with that edge as a blocker, or is it something you saw develop as last season went on? Uh, you know, I think it was always in there. Um, I, I, I think he just, you know, um, shoot, that's how we want to play football. And so he saw it over and over again. You know, we want to play with dominant contact. We want to strike people. We want to put our hands on people and, and move them. Um, you know, it, there's a difference between um, blocking someone and moving someone, um, shielding someone and moving someone. So uh, I think he saw that, and then he just saw the, um, you know, the reward, the benefit, and so it now just became like a contagious culture type of deal. Thank you. Y'all going. Uh, Isaiah Nair and um, probably Alex Bullock in here. Um, questions? Isaiah, what have you found about this transition that's, uh, that stood out to you and how, how have you felt getting your, your feet wet in this? Um, it honestly, it's felt, it's felt like home since I first came here. You know, met the coaches, met the players, you know, everything was smooth and, you know, just, you know, I came here and everything just started clicking, you know. So I've been enjoying my time here and I'm looking forward to, you know, you know, making a lot of a lot of memories here. Are you fully healthy at this point or, or when did that kind of happen for you in the course of your career in the last years? So uh, I I'm I've been healthy for the past for the past year, about a about a year or so. So I'm fully healthy, moving and you know, I'm only getting healthier. What did you learn about just transferring the first time in that experience and, and how are you going to use that experience here in Nebraska? Uh, from the first time I transferred, you know, just to kind of uh, just just stay poised. I remember the first time, you know, I kind of I, I got excited but super overwhelmed. And, you know, I, I, I kind of overlooked some things that I, I shouldn't have overlooked. You know, the second time around, you know, I really took my time to see what was best for me. And ultimately, that's what led me to this position. So. Yeah.
What, uh, what stands out to you about Coach McGuire and the way that he's uh, he's been able to coach you up so far? Coach McGuire, he, he's young, as y'all know, and he's very, very energized. Uh, he's super, super smart. He knows the game uh, uh, better than a lot of people out there. And um, just being around him, he pushes you really hard. You know, he, he has very high standards for everybody in that room. And, you know, he expects everybody to live up to that standard. So, you know, that's the kind of coach he is. And, you know, I'm excited to work with him. You've been around big time programs. What stood out to you when you got here, even with the mat drills and winter work about the culture at Nebraska when you first arrived? Uh, you know, what stood out was, you know, everybody, a lot of people are bought, uh, bought in. You know, if, if you have a lot of players who aren't bought in, then, you know, things aren't going to go the way you, you want them to go. So the, the more people, the more players that you can get bought in to what the coaches are trying to say, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of success that, you know, results from that. And that's one thing I've noticed. So, you know, we got a good thing going on. And, you know, a lot of people are, you know, just committed, you know, and that's what you want to see out of, uh, out of uh, the players. Was there an initial connection that led you to look at Nebraska, a coach that you'd heard of, um, you know, a, a friend, a mutual, a mutual relationship, anything? Uh, it, it's kind of weird because um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't really, I didn't, re I wasn't really looking at Nebraska until one day Coach G, Coach G had, uh, had hit me, and you know we're from the same area, so that's a that's a that's a connection right there. And just understand, knowing that there's somebody from the same area that I'm from, you know, he knows what it's like coming out of there. So that's, you know, that's kind of one thing that drew me over here. But, yeah. What do you feel like the strength of your game is? And what's that thing that you're looking to maybe take the next step on this spring? I feel like the strength of my game is, uh, you know, being able to create separation, catch the uh, catch the ball, 50-50 catches, um, my football IQ, and... Yeah, I, I think those are my three strengths. You know, still can improve on those things, but I feel like, you know, for me, those that's where I stand out to myself. Coach Roll had mentioned that um, one of the things that he wanted the receivers to work on is beating press coverage consistently. Um, just in your own words, what, what's it take to be a good receiver who beats press coverage? Uh, what what it takes to be press coverage, you have to, you know, know and understand the DB. You have to really um, – there are times where you may need to be physical. Sometimes you may need to rely on your technique. You know, it all it all comes down to understanding your opponent and you know, just being consistent. You know, you, you can't just rely on talent. You have to re rely on your technique. You know, revert back to your training. And if you just trust your training and you go out there and then you apply it, then you'll begin to see the consistency. You know, and you know you'll consistent consistently beat press coverage. So. Yeah. Isaiah, how do you describe the connection and chemistry you have with the quarterbacks after being here just a few months? Uh, it, it is very strong. You know, each of those quarterbacks, you know, we is, uh, you know, they're, they're all three different, you know, but they're all three, you know, amazing quarterbacks. And the, the chemistry is there. We're teaching one, each and every one of them. You know, we go out there and practice. I've practiced with all three. They can all sling it. So I'm, I'm glad to have all three of them, you know, go out, come out there and, you know, compete. You're a bigger bodied wide receiver, but how is it playing with, you know, kind of those smaller speed scooters next to you, like Dave Jaden Doss and Jalen Moore and those guys? You know, you, you learn from those guys, you know, uh, as a bigger body receiver, you know, seeing the things that the smaller receivers do, you know, maybe they're naturally more quicker or, or more elusive, you know, I just, you know, I try to do my best to see what I can learn from them, you know, and try to apply it in my game. So. That's what I say. What's it like coming in here at the same time with Jamal? Um, maybe having a similar deal where you're, you're, you've been around the college game a while, and, and what have you seen him bring to the room? I think it's great. You know, Jamal is a very, very skilled player, obviously very experienced. You guys have seen what he has done. I think it's, you know, great to come in with a receiver like him, you know, uh, and play alongside a receiver with experience. You know, he he elevates my game. I elevate his game. You know, we, we, we make each other better. We make each other compete. And being able to come out here and, you know, have him on one side, have me on another side, you know, I think it's a pretty good combo. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can what we can do this year. Is it, you obviously go, go up against some of the corners. Um, Tommy Hill's a veteran. A lot of young guys in that room also. 
Um, what have you seen from that position? Any anybody stood out to you? Uh, it's a very very competitive competitive uh, group. I like Tommy. I like going against him. We were just talking some trash earlier today, so I like going against uh, uh, him. And really, all of those guys. You know, all of those guys are are competitive. And they're learning from each other, you can see. So being able to go out there, you know, you can't take no plays off. You know, that's one thing I noticed about the group. Because if you take a play off, then, you know, that's you know, that's their chance to, to get in on you. So you always got to gotta stay alert and, you know, just keep the same mentality for each of DB across the board. Anything else for Isaiah? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you all. Thank you.
kids in the room this spring? Yeah, um, you know, I had a little experience last year when uh, some of the guys went down. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely different um, getting used to that leadership role, trying to be one of the older guys, the veterans in the room, you know, first guy up at every drill. Um, outside of football, you know, just making sure guys are okay, doing the right things and all that. So, How have you seen the development, I guess, particularly the younger guys now going into their second year? How have you seen, mm -hmm. what kind of steps have you seen them take uh, this spring? Yeah. Um, you know, the standard that we have on our team and in the receiver room, we make them live up to it uh, every day. You know, when they first got here, you know, it might be a little challenging to, um, you know, get used to that. But the the evolution of you know, all those young guys all their games has been you know they've went from here to here every single day and you know they've just gotten better and better every single day so it seems like jamal and isaiah even though they're older college players are, are willing or want to learn as much from the others as the others learn from them you kind of see that in them yeah no they they want to learn no matter what they never think they're at like a, you know they're even though they've played so much college football and had so much experience they're always trying to learn and they're always, you know, trying to, you know, how did you do this? How did you do that? Uh, what can I do better here and here? So they're great learners, and uh, they lead by example as well. You've seen the added element they bring with their size, mm -hmm. at, like in the red zone and some yeah. of that stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, they're both six four and, you know, long. So when they you throw it up to them, you know, they can just box out a guy or any of that stuff. And uh, it's hard to defend that, you know, those, so... How do you think you've developed, especially going into this year, having a little more of your feet under you and a bigger role? What did last year do for um, just where you're at this year now? Yeah, um, being able to have a, a full season under my belt and then, you know, the last couple months over the off season, knowing what I have to work on to get better at to become a better player and also what I can expect in the games and how to prepare myself. Um, you know, it's done wonders. You know, I can see it, the evolution of my game, like, um, I'm bigger, faster, stronger than I was last year. And just knowing little parts of each play or the offense, um, how the offense works and all that stuff. So getting a full season under my belt really helped with that. How much uh, convincing did it take to get your brother to come back for a six year? Yeah, it seemed no. like it was a closer call than no, yeah. Uh, to, to be honest, honest, I thought I thought he was leaving. You know, I thought he was going to be done. But uh, he did, I just said, you know, follow what your heart says. And I didn't even know he was doing it until I saw on social media that he posted. He never told me. So, um, but yeah, I think he was leaning towards leaving, but he decided he had unfinished business here and he wanted to come back, so. Give him a hard time that he's in college for six years. Yeah, now. everybody on the team always says that, you know, you're the oldest, you're six years, like go get a job or something, but no. Was there a point last fall? I mean, you played a ton of snaps, but when you felt a tip confidence-wise for you, where you, you're like, you know, not only do you belong, but I'm one of the main guys. Yeah, here. no. Uh, it's always definitely like a transition. Like you're like, oh, can I really play at this level when you've never played? But once you get on that field, you realize it's just football, and you're you you belong here for a reason. Like the coaches brought you here because they they see what you can do or they see like what you can become. So yeah, I'm doing that. Where where do you want to improve going into next season? Um, I mean the cliche answer, but everywhere, you know. Uh, route running, catching, blocking, being a leader. Being a leader is probably the biggest one because, you know, we have a lot of young guys that are still coming along and all that, and just trying to be a leader in our room is the biggest thing probably. How big a deal do you think it is, you know, your, your story and John's story of, like, in-state kids, they, 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 this staff gave a real good chance and you're succeeding with it to other players who are coming up, you know, in the high school ranks around here. Yeah. Um, I think I I hope it shows them that you know if they put in the work uh, and they work at, work as hard as they can every day that they belong as well. Like um, football is football. If you're good at football, you can play anywhere. So uh, I just hope that me and my brother, um, what we've done so far, can inspire those kids around the state to do the same. Anything else for Alex? All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.